Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for our service. Thank you because we know you are present mightily here. Lord Jesus, we will welcome you here. We rejoice in your presence. We have the assurance that as you have said, we're two or three, are gathered in your name. There you are in their midst and we know you are here today. We are praying, Lord, you will stretch forth your hand. Bless everyone in Jesus' name. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for being present in our service today. We pray, Lord, your power and might will be felt all through the service in Jesus' name. We pray that you make us carriers and possessors of your blessing. And then from this place, we'll reach out to all the people, and then we'll touch them with a hand of blessing in Jesus' name. And for new brothers and sisters who have just come in, and they are now with us, not only in the church, but in the kingdom. We pray, Lord, it will be a great time of service for them in Jesus' name. Bless them and bless us too. And make us partakers of the supernatural power of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You can be seated today. We're having uh, something very special. It's special because, uh, I don't know, since last uh, this is the time you have had this last. We're talking about the blessing of growing in scriptural giving. The blessing of growing in scriptural giving. There's a lot in that sentence, in that message, in that title, the topic of the message I told you just now. Number one is giving. Number two is scriptural giving. Then number three is growing in scriptural giving. And then the blessing, the profit that comes along giving to the Lord in a scriptural way. And as you grow in that giving, when we talk about growth, growth is both desired and demanded in life. A new baby comes into the family, and the parents desire growth. A man has just started a business, and he expects growth. A person has come into the Christian life, into the fold, and is desiring and wanting spiritual growth. Or we have just started a new district somewhere, a new ministry somewhere, and we want growth. Or it is your family there, you're looking at the finance, you're looking at all that you have there, and you want growth. Or there is a particular dream the Lord has given to you, and you've seen the beginning, the commencement of that dream. And if there is anything you want, you want growth in the fulfillment and revelation of the hand of God in that dream. We want growth. And there is need for growth in every sphere of life, a spiritual life and domestic life, family life, financial, professional life. We want growth and desire growth everywhere. And God has made adequate provision for growth. But if we're going to grow, number one, there must be growth in knowledge and understanding. Growth in knowledge and understanding. It is because you have knowledge and understanding, that's why you are growing. Take your family, for example. In your family, if you don't have any better knowledge, any higher knowledge, any greater knowledge today about family life than you had 10 years ago, you'll just be like 10 years ago. Because it is the growth in knowledge and understanding of what the family is, that's how you are going to grow. In your business life, if you don't have any knowledge, any understanding today, higher than you had seven years ago, you're not going to grow in that profession, in that work you're doing. You'll keep on doing the same thing, the same way every day, and there'll be no growth. Number one, then we need knowledge and understanding, and we need to grow in that number two, in love and fellowship. You know, as we're here together in the fellowship, as we're here together in the church, if you know people that sometimes see you, you know, when they asked for you maybe about five years ago, and that fellow left and came back, and he met you just the same. Love has not grown. Fellowship has not grown. And you're going to act, you're going to behave, you're going to talk, you're going to relate like related five years ago. 
But if you are going to grow in that house fellowship or in that zone, there must be the growth of love and fellowship. Number three, in wisdom and maturity. If we're going to grow at all, then there must be growth in wisdom as well as in maturity. Here we are, as uh, you know, our young people over there, as they uh, come to church every Sunday and every Monday and every Thursday. And they have the youth programs during the Easter retreat, December retreat, and every time. There's not going to be any growth spiritually among them if there is no growth in wisdom and maturity. They'll keep on acting the same way, doing the same thing, going the same direction. They went uh, maybe about uh, five years ago when they were seeing the primary school children's section. But if we're going to grow in anything that we do, it demands growth in wisdom and maturity. Number four, growth in service and worship. As we're talking about growing in scriptural giving, it means that in your service to the Lord, there is growth. The way you're serving the Lord today will be higher, will be greater uh, than the way you served the Lord three years ago. If there is growth in service and worship, the way you sing today, and the way you pray today, and the way you are interacting with the Lord, and the way you are sending your thanksgiving and gratitude to God will be higher today than 10 years ago. If you are growing in service and worship, number five, in purity and power in your own life, after you have been saved, after you have been sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, you will not be stagnant. But you want to grow. And it is when you are growing in that purity and power that then the rest of your life will be carried along and then you will grow. Number six, in spiritual strength and endurance. Uh, you know, when we talk about growth, uh, there were things that happened 10 years ago and you said, I won't take that from anybody. You couldn't endure anything. And if you had seen like that today, and what you couldn't endure 10 years ago, you still cannot endure today. There is no growth, but it is when you're moving on. You're marching forward. You're able to endure today, and you're able to take today what you couldn't endure and take about 10 years ago. Then we know you are growing. And then number seven in discipleship and giving. It is when we're growing in our understanding of discipleship. And we're going, growing in the knowledge of discipleship. Then we come to the Lord, and then we're able to grow, and we grow in giving. In fact, I'll tell you this. If you don't grow in knowledge and understanding, you'll not grow in giving. If you do not grow in love and fellowship, your love for God, loving God today more than you love him two years ago, if you don't grow in love and fellowship, you'll not grow in giving. If you're not growing wisdom and maturity, the way you approach things, the wisdom to know how to spend your money, and the wisdom to know how to give to God, and the maturity with, you know, an adult believing attitude, without that growth in wisdom and maturity, you will not grow in giving. What I mean is, let's say, for example, you are earning about, uh, maybe, about uh, 5,000 uh, naira, about uh, maybe five years ago. And then when they say you want to worship the Lord with your tithe and offering, you raise up uh, 10 naira. And then you give. And then when you are now earning 7,000 naira, then they say tithe and offering, you raise up the same 10 naira. And then you have now got a more, and you are now earning about 15,000 naira every month. You raise up the same 10 naira. Because even though you are growing, even though you are having more money, but you don't grow in understanding, you don't grow in knowledge, you don't grow in love. And because you don't grow in love, it's the same 100 naira you'll be raising up every time. It's the same five uh, naira you'll be raising up every time. Because you are not growing, it is a growth. In knowledge and understanding that makes you grow in giving. It is the growth in love and fellowship that makes you grow in giving. It is the growth in wisdom and maturity that makes you grow in giving. It is your growth in service and worship that makes you grow in giving. Your growth in purity and your growth in power that you appreciate the cleansing blood of the Lamb. 
and the power of the Holy Ghost in your life. That growth will lead you to growing in giving. When you grow in strength and endurance. Now you can do without some things. And you say, no, I'm not going to spend all my money on myself. I'm going to give more to the Lord. That's why you grow in giving your understanding of discipleship. And you are growing in discipleship. That's what leads you to grow in giving. As we grow in grace and the grace of giving. Then we receive greater blessings from the Lord. We can only grow in giving if we grow in knowledge, in understanding, in love, in affection, in faith, faith in the giver. And let me show you some people that they kept growing. And as they kept growing, then the Lord made them greater and greater. In Genesis chapter 24, Verses 34 and 35. Genesis chapter 24. Verses 34 and 35. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And the Lord has blessed my master greatly. And he's become great. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and men servants and maid servants and camels and asses. That's talking about Abraham. He became great. But have you noticed that Abraham kept on growing and growing and growing in giving? Uh, for example, the Lord called him in chapter 12 of Genesis and he followed the Lord. He just gave his life to the Lord. And then we're told in chapter 13 that Lord that went with him became also prospered. And there was a kind of a difficulty and strife between the herdsmen. And again, Abraham gave. He gave the first chance. He said, Lord, come over here. We shouldn't strive because we're brethren. If you take the right, I will take the left. He gave. He just gave him. Take whatever you want. And then we're told in chapter 14, how that, uh, you know, the enemies came and they took Lot away. And Abraham had about it and he gave his time. And he gave the service of his uh, servants. And he fought against those people and they received everything back. And then in chapter 15, he was offering to the Lord. He was giving sacrifice and offering to the Lord. He kept on growing in giving, growing in giving. And then we're told in chapter 22, God called Abraham and said, Abraham, he said, here am I. Take that your son, your son that you love very much, give him to me. And then Abraham said, yes, Lord, that's what I'm going to do. You see that man, he kept on giving and giving and giving. And because he was growing in giving, then you will see the comment here that the Lord bless my master greatly. is become great. I want you to look at another man. It's in First Chronicles chapter 11 verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 11, we're looking at verse 9. This is talking about David. So David waxed greater and greater, for the Lord of hosts was with him. Uh, we'll read it together later. How this man also, David, he just kept on giving and kept on giving and kept on giving. And he didn't even charge the people of Israel for his services when he killed Goliath for them. How much did he earn? What position did he have? And what reward was he given? Nothing. He only had the persecution of Saul. But all the same, he kept on giving. He gave his life. He gave his strength. He gave his wisdom. He gave his experience. And when it came time to build the temple, the tabernacle for Israel, he provided and gave. And this man, because he was a man dedicated to giving, this dedication to giving, then we are told here that he became greater and greater. And that's why the Bible says it is blessed, more blessed to give than to receive. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 35. Acts chapter 20. We're looking at verse 35. I have showed you all things. How that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. 
You see, when you keep on giving and giving and giving, it makes the blessings of God to overflow in your life. And the blessings will overflow. I said the blessings will overflow. The blessing of growing in scriptural giving. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, God's promise to gracious givers. Gracious givers. Happy givers. Cheerful givers. The people that give without any complaint. The people that give without looking back. The people that give without reservation. The people that give without any canal comparison. I'm giving so much, I wonder what the others are giving. The people that give graciously. God's promise to gracious givers. Number two, godly pattern of guided giving. And you see there are some people, their, their giving is not guided by scripture. Their giving is not guided by the Holy Spirit. The giving is not guided by the love of God. They just give. And the things they give are not actually guided by scripture, guided by the spirit of God, guided by the love of God. Godly pattern for guided giving. Number three, growing prosperity for great givers. Let's come back to number one. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed now. Shaking together. Running over. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with that. It shall be measured to you again. You see all those people in the Bible that became prosperous. Think about Job. And think about Abraham. And think about Isaiah. And think about Ezekiah, and think about Jehoshaphat, and think about all those good, good people of the Old Testament, and the people of the New Testament that kept on giving and giving. The promise of God became fulfilled in their lives. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Then it says, what will be given to you will be good measure, and press down, and shaking, and running over shall men give into your bosom. Then he tells us, it's what we sow that we reap. It's what we give that will come back to us. And for even in little, little things, it is what you sow that you reap. And it is what you give that will be given to you. And you know, sometimes uh, you, are, you might be in your family, for example. And then you, maybe you're a lady, you're a woman, and you're married, and you, you want a smile from your husband. But you have a frown on your face. Give, and it shall be given to you. You give what you desire. And it is what you desire that will be given back to you. It's like when you are standing before the mirror. And then you are looking at the mirror. Then you see somebody in the mirror. That's your reflection. That's your image. That's your picture right there. And then you frown your face. And you tell the fellow in the mirror, smile at me if you want to smile. That one in the mirror will never smile except you smile yourself. If you need a smile, you smile. If you need joy, you give joy. If you need strength, you give strength. If you need help, you give help. If you need money, give money. Because it is what you give that will be given back to you. And how many people stand before the mirror of the world and they stand there with a plastic face, a stony face, a frowning face, an angry face, and then they are just standing there, they're saying the world should give them a smiling face. The world is like a mirror. And it is what you give that will be given back to you. Your customers, they're like mirror. It is what you give that they'll give back to you. Your friends, they're like a mirror. And the brothers and sisters here, they're like mirrors. If you give them a frown, you'll get a frown back. Give, and it shall be given unto you. When you give a smile, when you give love, when you give a helping hand, and when you give money, and when you give money to God, then it is that that will be given back unto you. What will be given to you is a good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, will be put into your bosom. In Psalm 37 verse 3. Psalm 37. We're looking at verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. 
so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. You must do something. If you want to be fed, if you want to be prospered, if you want the blessings of God to flow and overflow into your life, in verse 4, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Uh, the way God brings it to pass is that you yourself, you'll be giving out something. And that's the promise of God, that if you trust in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. If you trust in the Lord, and you're not just trusting in the money. You know, there are people that trust in the money. They wouldn't even spend the money. They will not spend the money for church. They will not spend the money for any project in the church. They will not spend the money on their wife. They will not spend the money on their children. They don't spend the money. They're just looking and piling it up, piling it up. And they're trusting in that money. The more it piles up, they, even though they're hungry, they will not buy food. Even though they're naked, they will not buy clothes. The more the money piles up, that's what gives them joy. Trust in the Lord and do good with that money. And something good is going on in the kingdom of God. And as that good thing is going on in the kingdom of God, put your money there and put your life there and put your resources there. Do good. And then it says, Verily, certainly, thou shalt be fed. In Psalm 112, 1, 1, 2. Psalm 112, I'm reading from verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. In verse 2, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. Do you want that to happen to you? It will happen. I said it will happen. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Mark that in your Bible. Because that's what God said he will give you. That's what God said will be fulfilled in your life. His righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. You see what we're talking about? He's talking about this man is a gracious giver. He is gracious. When he has any material thing, any material possession, he hears that the church is having a project, and this project is to glorify God and minister to the need of not only the local church, not only all the churches in Lagos here at the headquarters, to the churches all over the nation, and to the churches all over Africa, at the headquarters of deeper life. Because of that, he said, I'm going to be gracious. I am going to be generous because I know this is the chance for me. Then he tells us in verse 5, A good man showeth favor and lendeth, he giveth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. You know, it is so wonderful, and you, you never know you'll be in everlasting remembrance. And that means that when you get involved, something good is going on, and the resources are in your hand. And then you understand that you're going to be a gracious giver, a cheerful giver, a happy giver, a, a person that just flows in giving. Then it says, when those things are done, and then people begin to get saved and they're getting something and great things are happening to their lives through what you have done you will be in everlasting remembrance he shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is fixed trusting in the lord and that means you know there are some people they're shaky they're unstable and uh, jacob was talking to reuben and he said unstable as water thou shalt not excel when we are unstable not steady, not steadfast, not fixed. Then there's no blessing. Uh, at the time, some people hear about the Bagada project, the headquarters project. You know, they'll say, yes, I'm going to do this. And they can do it. And they can do it. But then after about a month or about two, about two months, then the fire, the vision, the desire goes down in them. And then their hearts are not fixed. They vouch. They pledged, they promised, but there was no fixing in their heart. But you see, when people are shaky like that, unstable like that, the blessing does not flow. 
but the people who are fixed in their heart. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees desire upon his enemies. What that is saying is that God will be an enemy to your enemies. And then, if they want to hinder your prosperity and blessing, once your heart is fixed in following after the Lord, God is going to push all those enemies aside. He has dispersed, he has, he has given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. Am I talking about you? I said, am I reading promises for you? They will be yours in Jesus' name. In Proverbs chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Lean not unto thine own understanding. Before you give, pray. You see when you hear about uh, something, and uh, that something is going on, and then we say, give, and it shall be given unto you. Don't just decide. Don't just lean upon your understanding. Maybe you have a million naira. And then, uh, you know, we say give. I say, okay, what am I going to give? I'll give 50,000. Don't lean upon your understanding. And then he tells us in verse 6, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. We're reading from verse H. Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offering. You see there are people that will say thank God I pay my tithe and offering. Really do you? Look up here. A tithe is one over ten of your income. If you are earning in your place of work, 40,000 Naira a month, a tithe is 4,000. Offering is not there yet. The tithe is 1 over 10. And you know every time you come, let's say you come to Sunday worship. Now is the time to worship the Lord with tithe and offering. And you're earning 40,000 Naira a month. On one Sunday, raise up your offering, you raise up a hundred naira. The following Sunday, raise up your offering, a hundred naira. The following Sunday, raise up your offering, a hundred naira. Because you are not growing, you don't understand. You are not growing in knowledge and understanding. Then the fourth Sunday of the month, raise it up, hundred. And then, if there are five Sundays in that month, offering hundred, making five hundred. And then Monday, maybe you bring uh, 20 naira or 50 naira, or you forgot because you are coming from work. And then on Thursday, raise up something, you are raising about 30 or 40. When you add everything together, maybe you have 700 naira that you're giving in the month. Out of 40,000, it's 4,000 that is tithe. And you're still to add more to that for the offering. And you have not even paid for project yet. That's what the Lord is saying. He said, you have robbed me. That's why many people are not receiving the fulfillment of the promise of God. Because it says in verse 9, ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. And now, it, how are we going to remedy that? Can the blessing come back? I'm telling you, speedily the blessing will come back. I said it will come back. In verse 10, Bring ye all the tithes, all, not a part of it. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Say that with me. God will pour out a blessing. That there shall not be room enough to receive it. If we will become faithful to God, and then he says, bring all the time. Look at the money, the amount of money you earn. And then you say, to be faithful to God. 
and to be faithful to the scriptures and to be guided according to the word of God, this is what I must do. One tenth is this amount. And when I'm coming, I bring that. Maybe in a check or maybe in a chorus. And of course, you know, when you do that, and it is more blessed to give than to receive. When you give that, then the Lord says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men put into your bosom. Agai chapter 2. Agai chapter 2. We're looking at verse 6. In Agai chapter 2, looking at verse 6. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Yet once it is a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea, and the dry land. And I will shake all nations, and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former. This uh, Bagada building that we're going to have, many people have been saved in the old building. Many people have been healed in the old building. Many people have gone from that place like the gate of heaven. Some of them, they're already in heaven. But this new one we're building, the glory of the latter house, shall be greater than that of the former, says the Lord of hosts. In this place will I give peace, says the Lord of hosts. If we will turn around and say, we have not been faithful in the past, but now from this day, we're going to be faithful. And we're going to respond to the word of the Lord. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press now. Shaking together. Running over. And if we say, yes, Lord, we have heard. Our giving from now on will be guided by the scripture and guided by the spirit of God and guided by the love of God. Then God says, from this day, I will bless you. I come to point number two, godly pattern for guided giving. Godly pattern for guided giving. Here is where you now need to have growth in knowledge. And growth in understanding. And growth in maturity. And growth in worship. And growth in purity and power. And growth in revelation. Receiving the revelation of the Lord. When you have the proper understanding and you grow, then your giving will be guided. And then there will be the godly pattern I'm going to show you in the word of God. Let's look at Matthew chapter 6 verse 1. Matthew chapter 6 verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your arms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your father which is in heaven. Therefore when thou doest thine arms do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest arms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doest, that thine arms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Now, we have read this before, and many people, they have a partial understanding of this passage. The partial understanding they have is, anytime I am giving anything to God and to anybody, the left hand must not know what my right hand is doing. And the, their interpretation of that is, if the husband is going to give tithes in the church, the wife must not know. The understanding is, if the wife is going to give tithes of her money, the husband must not know. The understanding is, if the child is going to give tithes and offering, or is going to make a pledge for any project we have, the children must give, and then the parents must not know what they are giving. It means that if the leaders are going to give, that the members must not know. And if the members are giving, the leader must not know what I'm giving. But 
That's not what it's saying. This is talking about arms. It's not talking about tithes and offering. That he used to see a beggar on the street. What the Pharisees will do is to blow a trumpet and call people, come and see me. I'm a good man. I'm a philanthropic man. I'm a great man. I am giving something to this beggar. Why it not for me, this beggar will die of hunger. Come and see what I'm giving him. That's what Jesus said. When you are giving arms to the poor, when you are giving arms to help the helpless, don't blow any trumpet. And don't allow people to know that this is what you are doing for the poor people. But when I'm giving to Jesus, am I giving arms to Jesus? Answer me. Is Jesus a beggar? When I'm giving my touch to the Almighty God, is Almighty God a beggar? Am I giving arms to God? When you are giving arms, your left hand will not know what your right hand is doing. But when you are giving to Jesus, and when you are giving to God, you're not giving arms. And you're not seeking the glory of men. You're giving because you're so excited and happy. God is my Father. Jesus is my Savior. See what he has done for me. Of course, I'm going to give to God everything that I have. Now, when the people gave to Jesus in those days, did they give secretly so that nobody later will not know what Trinan is doing? Let's look at the word of God in Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, we're reading verse 3. Luke chapter 8, verse 3. And Joanna, the wife of Shusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. They knew. Because they gave to Jesus, and they gave it joyfully. And they gave it guided by scripture. And because when they were giving to Jesus, they were not giving alms. You don't give alms to Jesus. Your tithe is not alms. It's the right of the Almighty God. It's your responsibility. And this is what he has told you to do. Uh, for example, it says when you pray, you enter into your closet, and then you shut your door, and you pray. You pray to your father, which is in secret. Does that mean we must not pray in church because it, no door is shut? Does that mean we cannot pray in the bus? And when, you know, you, you want to go on a journey, you bend your head, you want to, of course, you can pray. But how about when you are praying your house, shut the door, that's your house. That's when you are praying in your house. And you see the prayer all over. And the same Jesus that talked about that prayer, shutting the door. He was at Lazarus' tomb in the public. He lifted up his face to the Lord and he prayed. The point is, we must grow in our knowledge. And grow in our understanding. And grow in our love for God. And grow in our fellowship to the Lord. And grow in revelation. The revelation of the word of God. You've seen over here, Joanna. And you've seen Susanna. And many others. They minister to the Lord Jesus of their substance. And people knew about it. In fact, in John chapter 12. John chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 3. John chapter 12, verse 3. Then took Mary. A pouch of ointment, of spartanage, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of the disciples, Judas is cannot Simon's son, which shall betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? But Jesus is not a poor man. He forsook everything to give us everything. And it was done to Jesus publicly. And we're told the name of the person that poured days on him. And when you are doing something for Jesus, when you are doing something for the glory of God, you cannot always do it in secret and say, my left hand will not know my right, what my right hand is doing. Sometimes there will be a Judas Iscariot there to oppose you and to criticize you. Sometimes there will be the people that read their Bible upside down that will be there to criticize you. There will be the people that do not understand. When I'm giving my tithe, I'm not giving arms to God. 
And when I'm giving my offering to the Lord, I'm not giving him arms. And sometimes there'll be a Judas is carried out there. His mind is all confused and he's saying, why is she doing this? Why is he doing this one? Why are they doing it like this? Don't mind those Judas is carried After all, they're the betrayers. And they don't, in fact, it says that Judas and Scarlet was stealing from the bag in another place. And then we're told in verse 6, days he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a seed and had the bag and bear what was therein. You know, the people that actually want to steal, they say, oh, are you giving Jesus publicly? Now everybody knows the amount and we cannot take out of it. Why don't you give it quickly? And then it passes to the bag, and then I can fumble with it and take what I want and release what I want to release. Because they do not have the love of God in their hearts. And then Jesus said, let her alone. She's doing this for me publicly. Let her alone. Hi, but when you said we shouldn't give our hands for the left hand, not to know what the right hand is doing. I'm not a beggar on the street, and I'm not receiving arms. I am the Lord and the Master, and she is doing this for me as one of the saved people. Let her alone against the day of my burying, as she kept this. So we understand then, how did they do it in the Acts of the Apostles in the early church? Let's look at Acts chapter 4 verse 36. And Joseph, who was by the apostles, son, was so named Barnabas which has been interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, have been learned, sold each, and brought the money, and laid each where? At the apostles' feet. Why is it uh, this man brought it directly to the apostles? Oh, because this is not arms. This has been given to God. There was a project in the early church, and then the members of the church, this one pledged this, this one pledged this. And the case of Barnabas, he said, I don't have the money now in cash, but I have land. And I'm going to sell the land. And then when he sold the land, he brought the money to the apostles' feet. That's not arms. And when we have a project in the church, we want to build the church. And then we want to know whether the thing is complete or not. We say it will cost this amount. And our district has been given this amount to pay for the project. And then our leader, the coordinator there, the local pastor there, will say now, believers, we're having believers meeting. This is our project. And uh, we need this, we need this. If you can give, um, you know, one million, come to this side. You're going to give 500, come to this side. You're going to give 100,000, come to this side. And then somebody like Judas and Scarlet, they will say, ah, why are they doing it like this? I am going to give, but I will not allow the coordinator or the pastor to know what I'm going to give. What's the matter? You don't grow in knowledge. You don't grow in revelation. You don't grow in the, in the understanding of the word of God. When we are having projects, we are not giving arms to God or giving arms to the pastor or giving arms to anybody. We're doing this to do the work of God. And if you can give, then you go there. And then when you write the paper, I'll give one million naira. You write your name. You write your address. Why? Because when we collect all those papers, and we're going to add everything together. When we add it together, we want to be sure we have now got everything. Because the pipes, they cost a specific amount of money. And the cement we're going to use will cost a specific amount of money. And when we add everything, we will say, yes, praise the Lord, everything is all right. But when we say everything is all right, that's just paper. That's just pledge. That's just vow. And if you forget, and you are not redeeming your pledge because we have your name, we have your address. Maybe you are just forgetting and we knock at your door. We say, this is what you said you are going to give to God. If we don't monitor it like that, there are people that will just write some things on paper. They throw the paper to us, but the paper is not money. It's not check. And therefore, because it's not available, we are not able to do the project properly. But you see over here, you see the way they did it. Peter knew that Barnabas pledged this, and Barnabas sold the land, and he brought the money. Look at chapter 5, Acts chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias, or Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and kept back part of the price, 
his wife also being privy to it in the knowledge of it privately and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles feet at the apostles feet no secrecy here everything was plain this one is not arms this is something being done to the lord but peter said ananias why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Ah, uh, look at this. Peter didn't say, well, it's between him and God. No, this is pledge. You pledge that you're going to sell the land. Barnabas has done it. And Barnabas gave testimony. And the apostle said, yes, we know. His witness, his record is true. That's what he did. Then Ananias also said, I'm going to do the same thing. That's your pledge. And then Peter said in verse 4, Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? Were you not the one that made the pledge? Why didn't you redeem the pledge? And after it was sold, was it not in thy power? Why hast thou conceived this sin in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. You get the point I'm making. The point is this godly pattern there's nothing secret here you want to give to god if you have the money you have the millions you give if you have hundred thousand then you give if yours is just fifty thousand then you give but it is something you are giving it is this is not right and left hand matter this is something we are following the bible the word of god in second timothy chapter one Second Timothy chapter 1. I want you to see many scriptures that in the pattern of the Bible for arms to the poor. Left hand must not know what the right hand is doing. That's arms for the poor. But for project in the church and for taking care of the needs in the church financially and for paying your tithes. There is no right and left hand matter there. This is your responsibility. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 16. The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus. For he ought refreshed me. And was not ashamed of my chain. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. The Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered unto me at Ephesus, thou knowest very well. Paul was writing to Timothy, and he was writing about another man, Onesiphorus. And he said, Timothy, you remember that man, how he ministered to me? How he gave to me, how he took care of me, and this is not left and right and matter. Of course, you know, every good thing he gave me, every gift he gave me, you know it very well. That's the word of God in Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, I'm reading there from verse 15. Philippians 4, verse 15. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but he only. Paul the apostle said, I told you, I gave you the record. There was no secrecy. You know from the records I've been giving you that from the time I departed from Macedonia, as concerning giving and receiving, all those other people, they didn't do well, but you, you did well. For even in Thessalonica, you sent once and again unto my necessities, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Not because I desire anything. You know, there may be some people that are saying, why is uh, the pastor uh, preaching like this? Not because I desire anything from you, because that project is God's project, it will be done. I said it will be done. But for you to grow in revelation, for you to grow in knowledge, for you to grow in understanding, for you to understand afresh that whatever you are giving to God is not arms. It's not arms. It says, I own, I possess all the thousands of animals in the bush, in the forest. If I'm hungry, I'll go and take them without your permission. And you can do that. And when he told Abraham 
offer your son unto me. Not that he even needed his son. The ram that will be offered was already available. It is not because I need anything from you. It's because you need to have the right understanding and the right knowledge and the right revelation of the word of God. That's why Paul the apostle said in verse 17, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. I desire that you will do something that will abound in your account in heaven. That God will say, this is what you are giving. And what you are giving, he will multiply a hundredfold. Give it back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. You know if you know about the African White Crusade. Did you know about that? I said, did you know about the African White Crusade? Now, before we got to that place, I'm not living there. But the church in Port Harcourt, they decided they'll build a house, almost a mansion, for me there. And I got there. I've been there before. And then when I got to Port Harcourt before, I never saw any house like, you know, I just leave there, you know, where they put me. But this time that they built a separate place, I asked the overseer there, I said, what? What are you doing? I'm only here for crusade. How is it that you are built uh, all this? He said, well, we know you are growing older. And we don't want you to just live in any ramshackle place. That's why the Lord laid on our heart and we built it. But you know that as we came to that crusade in the first day, to be able to tell the governor that, well, we are here in your state. I just went to greet him. He caught sea call. In the evening, he sent uh, one of their ministers there. And the River State donated 10 million to Deeper Life, just like that. Not only that, we finished that crusade. And when we finished the crusade, I called the security people there and I said, security people, you have been so wonderful. Those people, uh, you really need to understand their dedication. They gave everything to the Lord. And I said, come together here. I just prayed for, I said, bye-bye, God bless you. When I led, the state house sent, the wife of the state governor sent uh, to the pastor there and said, all those security people that work when your pastor was here, they did a good job. Let them come to the state house. We're going to give every one of them job. And then when we were there, there was somebody, uh, they were taking there the long, a luxurious bus, long, but this kind of bus that you take from Lagos to, you know, to the east. Somebody gave that and said, during this uh, crusade, uh, you want to take people, your instrument, your equipment from this place to the crusade field, uh, get this bus and use, and they use the bus. After we finished the crusade, and I came back to Lagos, and the pastor said, uh, thank you very much for the bus, you can take it back. The fellow said, I don't need it again, I give it to the church. And it has not ended yet. Then, uh, you know, when I was there, they were having the kind of a uh, vehicle I used here, this kind of Jeep, uh, card, Lexus, it was, and uh, over there. This one is even inferior to that. And uh, somebody in that uh, place said, in the convoy of the pastor, I want uh, you to please take this vehicle and use for the few days it'll be here. And the pastor said, thank you very much. And then when I finished, I came back to Lagos, and the pastor said, brother, thank you very much. The crusade is over. The pastor has gone back. Have your Lexus back. And uh, the fellow said, now it's now for the church. <laughs> now, see the blessing of God upon them just because they gave. And you can't, if they're going to build a house for me there, how can you do that in secret that your left hand will not know what your right hand is doing when you're building a house? And then see the blessing that came upon them. Blessing coming from the state government. Blessing coming for the employment of the security. Blessing coming from everybody. That's why I said, your own time of blessing has come. And your own time of abundance has come. And anywhere you are hearing this message, this is how to respond. When you respond properly, and Paul the Apostle said, you Philippians, it's because I want something in your account in heaven. That's why I'm telling you this, so that you'll be able to give to God and your account in heaven will be wonderful. I said your account in heaven will be wonderful. We're looking at Exodus chapter 35. Exodus chapter 35. I'm reading from verse 4. And see how the people gave to the project. And this, uh, I've told you already, this is an open thing. This is a very clear thing. And they demonstrated how they loved the Lord. By how they gave. In Exodus chapter 35, I'm reading from verse 4. 
Exodus chapter 35, reading from verse 4. And Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is a thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart. Let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin and dyed red and badger skin and sheeting wood and oil for the light and spices for anointing oil and for the sweet incense and the onyx stone and the stones to be set for the effort and for the breastplate and every wise hearted among you shall come and make all that the Lord has commanded. That's what they were told. How did they respond? Verse 21. And they came, everyone. And they came, everyone whose heart stirred him up. And everyone whose spirit made willing. And they brought the Lord's offering to the work of the tabernacle of the congregation and for all the service and for the holy garments. Every one of them they came and they brought what they had. And it was all those things they brought, but they were able now to build the tabernacle. I want you to see the result here in verse 29. And the children of Israel brought a willing offering unto the Lord, every man and every woman whose heart made them willing to bring for all the manner of work, which the Lord had commanded to be made by the hand of Moses. Everybody brought, and it wasn't any secret, they brought it openly. Look at uh, First Chronicles chapter 29. First Chronicles chapter 29, I'm reading from verse 1. In First Chronicles 29 verse 1, moreover, David the king said unto all the congregation Solomon my son whom alone God has chosen is yet young and tender and the work is great for the palace is not for man for the but for the Lord. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for the things of, to be made of gold and the silver of, for things of silver and the brass for things of, of brass and iron for the things of iron and wood for the things of wood onyx stones and stones to be set and glistering stones and of diverse colors and all manner of precious stones marble stones in abundance moreover because i have set my affection to the house of my god i have of my own proper good of gold and silver which i have given to the house of my god over and above all that are prepared for the holy house, even 3,000 talents of gold and of gold of offer and the 7,000 talents of refined silver to overlay the walls of the houses there, there with her. Now you can see here, David said, we're preparing for the building of the house. And he didn't say, I don't want anybody to know what I'm given. Everybody knew. As a leader, he announced to them, he said, see what I am giving. And then that will be an encouragement to the people that are ministers under him to also give. Look at verse 6. Then the chief of the fathers and the princes of the tribes of Israel and the captains of thousands and of hundreds with the rulers of the king's work offered willingly. You see, the leader showed an example. This wasn't a secret thing. And as you go back in the district and the coordinator will talk to you or your local pastor will talk to you or your overseer will talk to you, then if they tell you, this is what I'm giving by the grace of God, is to challenge you. There will not be a Judas Iscariot there that is saying, why are they publicizing this? Why is the leader saying it like this, that he too, that he has given? That's what David did. And when David announced to them, I love the house of God. I'm giving, I'm committed to the house of God. And this is what I have done. Then they also, they picked up courage and consecration commitment. And they did the same in verse 7. They gave for the service of the house of God a fine gold. Of gold, 5,000 talents and 10,000 drums. And of silver, 10,000 talents. And of brass, 18,000 talents. And 100,000 talents of iron. And they, with whom precious stones were found, gave them to the treasure of the house of the Lord by the hand of Jael the Gashonite. 
Then the people rejoiced for they offered willingly because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord. And David the king also rejoiced with great joy. You see, there was nothing secret there. They brought and they knew. They said, that leader gave this, that leader gave this, that coordinator gave this, that student leader gave this, that women rep gave this, that overseer gave this, that overseer's wife gave this. They knew. And as they knew, they rejoiced together because with all their heart, they gave willingly. When we do that, will there be any blessing? Tell me out loud, will there be any blessing? Point number three, growing prosperity for great givers. Growing prosperity to, for great givers. Maybe as I come to this point, you're saying in your heart there, I wish I had much money, then I will be a great giver. But I don't have much. Look at, look at what we mean by great, great, great givers in uh, Mark chapter, four, chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, reading from verse 41. And Jesus sat over against the treasury. And beheld how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. That's good. And that's great. Those are great givers too. They were rich. And because they were rich, they cast in much. And there was a certain poor widow. And she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and says unto them verily i say unto you that this poor widow has cast more in than all day have cast into the treasury for all day did cast in of their abundance but she of her want did did cast in all that she had even all her living that's a great giver all she had, she didn't have much, and she gave everything. But I want to remind you again, the same Jesus that said, when you give arms, don't allow your left hand to know what your right hand is doing. That same Jesus, when they were giving in the temple or in the synagogue, because now this is not arms, we're giving to God. He was watching them. And those rich men gave much. And not only that he knew, he pointed the attention of what they gave to disciples. He said, disciples, come and learn a lesson here. Do you see these rich men? They cast in much. Jesus said so. Which means when you are giving to God, there's no secrecy about that one. Arms for the poor on the street. Secrecy. When you come to the church and you are giving to God, Jesus knows. And he also points to the disciples that the disciples ought to know. And then he said, look at this poor woman. Look at this poor widow. Do you see she has cast in only two miles? Evil said, this is the amount she cast in. But that's all her living. If Jesus pointed that out, then you understand. When we're giving in the church, you want to pay your tithes. That's your responsibility. That's something you must do. That's God's right. And the exact thing you bring to the Lord. And if we know, no problem. And if you sell your land, or you sell your car, or you sell a property, and you bring the amount of money, and you say, coordinator, leader, this is what I'm giving for this project. That's all right. Because Jesus pointed it out. And then when you do it like that, you're going to be blessed. Great, great givers. In Second Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves praying us with much entreaty. We would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. You see here, Paul the Apostle talking to the Corinthians. And he was saying that when we went to Macedonia, here is what they gave. 
And although they were poor, although they didn't have much, they were pleading with us, don't think because we are poor, we will not get involved in this project, in this taking care of the work of the Lord. Here is our own, beyond their, beyond their ability and their power, they did it. It was open, it was known. But those are great givers because they went beyond their natural resources. In chapter 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 6. But this I say, he which sweat burningly shall reap also sparingly. And he which sweat bountifully shall reap bountifully. That's how the prosperity comes. That's how the provision of the Lord comes. That's how wealth and riches will come to your life. He that soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth what kind of giver? Cheerful giver. That's why, you know, some churches, that's why when they are going to give, they come out and they, they are dancing. Because, you know, those people, they think if you are cheerful, you must dance. And so they come to the front and then they give and then they go back. Ah, you say, why are they doing it like that? Why don't they make it secret? So they are not making it secret because this is not arms. They are not giving arms to God. They are giving of their offering. They are giving of their tithe. And uh, if we know what you are giving, no problem. And then you do it cheerfully, happily. Then it says in verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that he always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. It's telling us that when you give like that, then you will abound to every good work. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Proverbs chapter 3. Verses 9 and 10. Proverbs 3, verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy bands be filled with plenty. If you will actually honor the Lord with your substance, with what you have, it says, your bands will be filled with plenty, and thy presses burst out. That means your bag will not be able to contain what you are going to have. Your account will not be able to contain what you will have. It will burst out with new wine. And that's what the Lord is saying. Let's come back to uh, Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. We're looking at verse 10. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring ye all the tithes, not part of the tithe. Don't be an Ananias. Don't be a sapphire as a woman. Bring ye all the tithes. If you're earning 30,000 a month, 3,000, that's the tithe. All the tithe. If you're earning 25, 2,500 is the tithe. Therefore, bring all the tithes. That means you're not going to cut any part back. And the practice you have been doing before, when you know you're earning maybe 100,000, and then you just bring like 1,000, then you raise it up, and you drop it in the bag. You're not bringing all the time. But the Lord is telling you that if you are really going to be faithful to the Lord, a tithe is one-tenth of what you have. And that's apart from the pledge we're making. The pledge, you make something. A pledge, a real pledge. That you say, I want to be a responsible member of this church. And I want to be a dependable member of this body of Christ. And that is our project together. And we're doing it. I said we're doing it. You'll be faithful in your tithe. You'll be faithful in the project. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. Abundant provision in my sufficiency in my house. And prove me now here we, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations shall call you blessed. Give me a good amen there. For ye shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of 
holds. Let's come back to this Exodus I read before. Exodus chapter 36 now. I read chapter 35 before. Exodus chapter 36, verse 3. And they received of Moses all the offering which the children of Israel had brought for the work of the service of the sanctuary to make it with them. And they brought yet unto him free offerings every morning. When did they bring the offering? Tell me out loud. We don't need to wait until Sunday. They brought it every morning. They brought it every morning. And there was, there was, a, there was a record. Now you tell me. If somebody brings uh, the, this money now, whether it's Monday or Tuesday, he comes. And he says, I brought my offering. We will not know him. Of course we know him. And as they brought it every morning, everybody knew. And all the wise men that wrought all the work of the sanctuary came every man from his work, which they made. And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment and they cause it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing, for the stuff they had was sufficient for all the work to make it, and too much. The Lord blessed them so much, they gave too much. And then in the houses, they also have too much. You are going to have too much. And the Lord will so bless us if we will respond to the word of the Lord. And it's not just for this time. Your time is until, until the end of your life. As you keep on earning money, then you keep on giving. And the blessing of the Lord will never stop in your life. In Second Chronicles chapter 31, verse 5. And as soon as the commandment came abroad, immediately, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of corn and wine and oil and honey and of all the increase of the field and the tithes of all things they brought in abundantly the tithes the tithes of all things brought they in abundantly and concerning the children of israel and judah that dwelt in the cities of judah they also brought in the tithe of oxen and the tithes of sheep and the tithe of the holy things which were consecrated unto the lord their god and laid them by heaps in the third month they began to lay the foundation of the heaps and finished them in the seventh month when Ezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people, Israel. In verse 9, and then Ezekiah questioned, there were the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. And Azariah, the chief priest of the house of Zadok, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat. And have left plenty, for the Lord has blessed his people. The Lord has blessed his people. The Lord has blessed his people. When we give according to God's prescription, the Lord will bless his people. That which is led is this great store. That which is led is this great store. The time has come for you. A time of blessing, a time of prosperity, and it's in your hand. The way has been shown, the path has been made clear. Give, and it shall be given unto you a good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that she meet, it shall be measured to you again. Let's rise up and commit ourselves to the Lord. This is the time of our breakthrough. Here is the key. If you want the blessing of the Lord without measure, beyond measure, here is the key. If you want your house to be overflowing with the blessings of the Lord, here is the key. If you want to watch greater and greater, here is the key that you are taking your decision now. You're not going to be unstable. You're going to be stable. You're going to be steady. You're going to be committed. Your mind speaks. Your heart speaks. Oh Lord, I am responding. I'm responding to the work of God. I'm responding to the call of the Lord. I am going to do what you have called me to do. I will give my time. And I will give the correct time. And I will give the total time. 
bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And then brought me here with, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that you'll not be able to have enough room to receive it. And any project that we have, that we have, you are going, whatever you are going to give, not just a, not, not just a penny, not just a farthing, not something that will not do much, but you give everything you have and you commit yourself to it and say, Lord, here am I, here am I. I am going to give everything that I have, everything that I have. You have land you want to sell, you have car you want to sell, you have any property you want to sell, you have anything you want to dispose of, so that you can build this magnificent building to the Lord, commit yourself to the Lord. Commit yourself to the Lord, and the Lord will bless you for it. So that you will have enough and extra. Enough and extra. Enough and extra to be able to take this work of God. The way is open for you. Your problem is that if I sow, I will live. If I give, he said, your poor abundance back into my life. Fulfill your word in my life. Tell the Lord, fulfill your word in my life. And you be faithful, be faithful and give. Be faithful and give. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse. Give the be meat in the storehouse. No lack in the house of God, no loss in the house of God, no limitation in the house of God, and then that no loss, no lack, no limitation in your life too. Talk to the Lord, and then you tell the Lord that you have promised that if I sow, I will leave. If I give, you send your poor abundance back into my life. Fulfill your word in my life. Tell the Lord, fulfill your word in my life. And you be faithful, be faithful and give. Be faithful and give. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse. Let there be meat in the storehouse. No lack in the house of God, no loss in the house of God, no limitation in the house of God, and then there will be no loss, no lack, no limitation, you're not true. In Jesus' name we pray. A breakthrough, amen. We're going to pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because you gave us a beautiful day and beautiful weather. We thank you because what a solemn assembly this is. And I pray, O oh Lord, all the blessings were showered upon people for the, a few testimonies. Multiply those testimonies upon every life in Jesus' name. Pray, Lord, you have told us that we need to work. We need to set our hands on the plow. And we need to sow the seed and be committed in every work that we're doing. All the legitimate businesses we're doing, oh Lord, we pray. You'll pour your abundant blessings upon them in Jesus' name. Poverty is cancelled from your life. Lack is cancelled from your life. Joblessness cancelled from your life. And Lord, I pray that those who have been earning wages into bags with holes, mend all those bags, they're putting the money in. And I pray the thing that is sapping their energy and taking away their resources, all those things, all those devourers, destroy the devourers in Jesus' name. Perfect health for everyone. Happiness for everyone. A good home for everyone. And I pray, Lord, the joy of the Lord will be our strength in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you because of the promotion you are giving to those big graves who are seeking souls. Promotion, promotion, promotion. Going higher and higher and higher. Confirm it in life in Jesus' name. 
I pray that everyone in the valley raise them to mount mountain top in Jesus' name. Lord, the world will not be the head and we will be the tail. God forbid. The world will be the tail. We will be the head in Jesus' name. Anywhere you put us, anywhere you send us, we will be head. And nobody will sit on the promotion of anyone. Oh Lord, I command all those strongholds that are sitting on the promotion of any child of God here, I pull them down in Jesus' name. Rise up and succeed. Move on and succeed. Go back to that same place and succeed. And I pray that the spirit of courage and success will follow after you. And Lord, you've told us about the corn of wheat falling to the ground and dying so that we seek only your glory and not our glory. Only your recognition and not our recognition. Only the praise of the Lord and not our praise. The grace to be self-sacrificing and the grace to be like the corn of wheat to fall into the ground and die and be forgotten so that only Jesus will be lifted up. I pray, O oh Lord, you fulfill it in Jesus' name. In the life of every brother, in the life of every sister, in the life of every child, every boy, every girl, up, up, Jesus. Bring down Satan from their lives in Jesus' name. I would up, up, Jesus, let there be victory. Up, up, Jesus, let there be healing. Up, up, Jesus, let there be deliverance. Up, up, Jesus, let there be joy. Up, up, Jesus, let there be possession. Up, up, Jesus, let there be prosperity. Up, up, Jesus, let there be promotion. Confirm it in Jesus' name. Down, down, Satan. Down, down, Satan. Down, down, Satan. Down, down, sickness. Down, down, infirmity. Down, down, problem. Down, down, divorce. Down, down, broken home. Down, down, barrenness. All those sins of the devil on our feet in Jesus' name. As we're walking, as we're going, if, if you are riding, the tire of your car will be on the head of the serpents and the scorpions. If you are riding, the tire of your bicycle, the tire of motorcycle will be on the head of the devil in Jesus' name. If you are walking underneath you, under your feet, under your boots, will be all those scorpions and serpents in Jesus' name. You trample them down. Everything that stood in your way before this time, walk over them and get to the mountain. Everything that has seen that you walk over them and get to the fullness of your joy. And I pray that all the blessings the Lord has given you will not decrease, will increase. Higher and higher every day. Greater and greater every day. Father and Father every day. Better and better every day. And the next time I see you, shining face. Shining face. Shining face. May the beauty of heaven come upon your life in Jesus' name. Once again, as you go, no loss. As you go, no lack. As you go, no limitation. We'll come back next time to rejoice together with you and with all your converts. You will not stumble. You will not fall. Angels will surround you everywhere. Nobody will kidnap you. Nobody will kidnap your children. The protection of the Lord is upon you. You'll come back with your testimony. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Breakthrough children of God. Breakthrough children of God. Breakthrough children of God. In Jesus' name we pray. For the rest of your life, for the rest of your life, amen will never stop in your life.